We offer two ways to create NPCs in our system. You can use your favorite character creation tool like GCA or GCS, or you can use our internal MOOC generator. Go into the chat window and type slash MOOC. There are two ways to create NPCs using the MOOC generator. The first is just entering the data on this screen. The second way to create an NPC is to import a stat block from a PDF or a web page. But to do that, you have to understand the first option. So let me explain that. The generator was designed to allow you to create NPCs or MOOCs, and yes, I was using air quotes there, as quickly as possible. So the idea is you would start entering data. We'll do this guy named Fred, and then you press tab to go to the next field. On input fields, the data that's in the input field is automatically selected. So if you don't want it, you can just type over it, or you can press backspace or delete to get rid of it. And then you hit tab again to, the, to go to the next field. Skinny, tall, and ugly. And now we'll tab to go through the attributes. You can just type in a number or whatever is appropriate. This field is the swing damage for the MOOC. So you would enter something like 1D plus 1 or 2D minus 1. But you may not need it. If you just plan to define melee and ranged attacks, then you don't really need to define the swing value. So let's go through the rest of the attributes and give them semi-reasonable values. And there, we're done. Now when you tab into a large text field, unfortunately it cannot highlight all of the text for you. But if you don't want any of this information, you can press Control A and, of course, delete it. This is the Notes field. It's a free-form text field that can contain anything you want. It's displayed near the top on the NPC character sheet, and it's the first note in any of the other character sheets. This is a great place to put on-the-fly formulas for commonly used actions. Once you're done, you tab out, and that brings you to the melee text area. Now, these bottom six text areas actually follow specific formats, and these formats are described in the user's guide under the section for the MOOC generator. So in melee, you can see examples of the basic formula, an attack name, which can include spaces, the skill level, and then some damage formula. Ranged attacks follow the same pattern, however, they have different optional parameters. These optional parameters are described in the user's guide, but I won't go over all of them now. You can see one of them right here, Accuracy 2. Once you've entered your attacks, you press Tab again to enter your traits. Traits are just text separated either by new lines or semicolons. And as you can see, they can actually include on-the-fly formulas. This is a on-the-fly formula to create a modifier, and this is an on-the-fly formula to create the control role for gambling. Skills and spells use the same format. It's the skill or spell name, then a dash, and then the skill level. Again, these can be separated by new lines or semicolons. Equipment isn't necessary to create an NPC because the attacks are defined in the melee and ranged areas above, but it's included because some stat blocks have equipment and we try to parse it. And once you're happy with your NPC, you would press the Test MOOC button. I'll do that now. You'll notice that it got rid of the semicolons in the straights and skills list and instead put everything on its own line. That's for easier parsing later. If there are no errors, the Test MOOC button becomes the Create MOOC button, and we'll do that now. Here is our first NPC, Fred. You can see that the notes and traits have parsed the on-the-fly formulas, and if you want, you can view this in the full character sheet, and there's Fred. You'll notice that the MOOC generator didn't go away. The idea is you're probably going to be creating more bad guys, so we'll do that here. Let's create a, a Bob and go through. He'll have the same stats. But here I'm going to introduce some errors so you can see what happens when we test. So for the kick, I'll get rid of the damage type. For the slingshot, I'll get rid of that. I'll get rid of the skill on lock picking. And for equipment, I'll get rid of the LBS. Now let's test it. There's an error reported on the screen. 
the system puts in the triple question mark to try to give you an idea of what it can't find. So here for melee, you can see that it's saying, I can't find the level end damage. Since this does not have a damage type, it's not a complete damage formula. You can fix that, of course, by putting in your damage and then removing that line. We'll test again, and of course, there's still errors. So here it's got the same issue. Can't find the level. All oh, right, we got rid of the level. So I'll put in this level and test again. Ah, but I didn't put a number inside the parentheses. So we'll put in a number and test again. Okay, these passed. Up, oh, yep, we're down here to lock picking. I'll just get rid of the lock picking and test again. And finally, the equipment is bad, but we don't need spells or equipment for this NPC, so we'll delete both and retest. Now it's passed, so if I press this button again, I will create this MOOC. And that is the process. You enter in data, test, and then you test the MOOC, you look for any errors, you fix those errors, and you test again. To enhance the data, you can add notes to any item by typing it on the next line, starting with the pound key. Bob always jabs with his left. We'll test the MOOC. It passed, so we'll create the MOOC. And you can see the note in the punch attack. And then when we go to the full view, it's displayed there as well. Notes are rather important in the next phase when we import stat blocks. Any data that we can't parse will be placed in a note, and it will be up to you to decipher its meaning. The second way to create NPCs is to import a stat block. So let's find a stat block. We do our best parsing a lot of different formats of stat blocks, so I'll show you a couple of examples. Here's one from the basic set under animals, just a black bear. We copy the text, come to the MOOC generator, and click on the import stat block button. Paste the text into here, and press the import button. You'll notice a few things here. In the notes, it added this three question marks and 300 pounds. And what that is indicating is that it doesn't know what to do with 300 pounds. We don't keep track of that kind of information for the NPCs. Also, it didn't find any attacks, which is true in this particular stat block, there were no attacks. It did, however, parse the traits and the skills. You can fix up the title and maybe the appearance and then test the MOOC. It passes, so we'll create the MOOC. You now have a little black bear. But importing the stat block just feeds this window. So if you want, you can add melee attacks. You can add an attack with claws. And once you tab out, the button changes back to test MOOC. You can test to see that you've entered the, the formula correctly. And now we'll create a black bear version 2. Test. Yes, it passes. Create. We now have Black Bear version 2. If you press the Import Stat Block button again, you'll notice that it has the previous stat block still pasted in there. The reason we do this is because sometimes when you're parsing the stat block, it just does not parse correctly. If you can figure out how or why, you can go into the stat block and make the changes yourself, and then press the Import button again. You can continue to do this as many times as you like. It always resets the input field. So we'll go back to the stat block and we'll import it. We'll go back to the stat block and we'll import it. Well, let's try another stat block. We'll go to the Dungeon Fantasy RPG Monsters Manual and try the Dire Wolf. We're going to copy the whole paragraph, the name and the description. And we'll go into the import stat block of course, the old stat block is there, so you just press Control A to select it and Control V to paste in your current stat block, and then we'll press the Import button. After you've imported the stat block, you should always check out the Notes section. We put anything we can't figure out how to parse up here, and if you see the three question marks, that's something that we just couldn't figure out at all, and that may be important. We'll see some examples later on. So let me clean up this MOOC and we'll test. It passes and I've created a dire wolf. Let's try another one from Dungeon Fantasy 10 Taverns. I'll try this cut purse. We'll copy it, 
replace the old stat block with the new one, and import. Now here we have some more errors. It's showing that it doesn't know what to do with LBS, or unarmed, and it somehow thinks the height and weight is an attack. Of course, this is a comment, so it will be ignored. And if we look back at the stat block, you can see that the basic lift has a pounds. And we're not parsing that. And they have the word unarmored after parry. But it doesn't really matter. It correctly parsed the parry, and it's ignoring the height and weight. So I can test this MOOC. It looks good. I'll clean up some of this stuff. I don't need that. There is no attack. I'll test, and I can create the cut purse. But wait, there's more. I always wanted to say that. Let's say you want to pull a stat block from the GURPS repository. Here is a dire bore. I'll import this stat block. And again, we've got a few errors here, but they don't look like they're that important. Let's test it to see if that would pass. Yes, it would pass. So I'll create the dire bore, and there's our dire bore. Okay, let's try a harder one. Here's a black dragon. We'll import the stat block, and ooh, we're starting to get more information that we're going to have to edit before we want to accept this. We can get rid of this. We don't care about that. But you can see here in the attacks, it was able to parse the bite and claws attack. But there's this corrupt water thing. Doesn't look like it's an attack. We may have to put that somewhere else. For the moment, I'll cut this out and I'll put it in the notes. And here's the tail attack. And behind it, or below it, is a comment. You can only attack straight ahead. Terror, fright check at a minus one. Oh, that's actually pretty good. That's a good comment for this attack. And we can actually convert this fright check at a minus one into an on-the-fly formula. So I will put a square bracket around it, minus one square bracket, and now this will turn into an on-the-fly check on this attack when we create it. So let's check the other attack out. It looks good. Dragon breath. That looks good. It was able to parse this comment. And everything else looks good. Let's test it. Hey, it passed. So let's create our black adult dragon. Here's the adult dragon. And you can see the fright check minus one is in the notes for the tail attack. Let's take a look at it in the full view. Now, if this is going to be one of your big bad bosses, you might consider a different body plan or you might not. Right now it defaults to the 9DR that came from the stat block, but you could go into the editor and change the body plan to whatever, serpent winged, and then enter in any values that you deem necessary. And the last one we'll try is this Bodak. So we go to the MOOC generator, import the stat block, and let's look at the notes. No errors there. Oh, the death gaze. Hmm, it wasn't able to figure out what to do with that. Which makes sense because it's not following the basic formula of a skill and some kind of damage formula. But if you remember from the document, attacks can also follow this format, where the damage text is enclosed in quotes because it's not really a damage you would roll. So let's try that. We'll go to the death gaze, get rid of the comment, we'll leave the skill as resisted by HT, but then the damage is kills target instantly. So we'll put that in quotes. Oh, and the vision based attack range 10. Oh, this should be a ranged attack. So let's remove it from the melee, put it in the range. And a vision based attack, that's just a comment about the attack. So We'll cut that out and put that on the next line with the pound sign for comment. Let's test that. It passes. Let's see what it creates. And there you go. You have a death gaze, which has the comment of vision-based attack. 
and it's resisted by HT. It doesn't show up very well here. Let's see what it looks like in the full view. Yeah, this looks a lot better. It's resisted by HT, which is not a roll you can make, and it kills the target instantly. But at least you can see it here on the ranged attack. And that is the basic process. It's a rinse and repeat. Enter in your stat block, import it, see what gets parsed into the various text fields, edit those, test. Once it passes, you then create. What happens if you have problems in the stat block itself? Let's say, for some reason, that speed got cut in half. And when you paste it in, it's on a new line. If we import, you can see here in the note that it says, I don't know what SPE is. So you have to go back to the stat block to see where SPE, oh, that's what happened. It got an extra new line in that I didn't need. So you fix it in the stat block and you try to import. And trust me, you can get some really weird errors and they produce some really weird results. So it may take a little bit of investigation on your part. Let's say, for example, crushing was spelled with a Z. And if you import it, you see this. This doesn't make any sense at all. And unfortunately, that's a bizarre side effect of the parsing logic. You need to go back to the stat block to see what might be incorrect. Hmm, at a quick glance, I can't really tell. So I go back to the MOOC generator, and I see that the punch hasn't fully created itself. It, it doesn't have a damage. Maybe the problem is around punch. So I look at punch and see the misspelling, fix it, and it imports correctly. And that's the process you have to go through. Look to see what has parsed correctly and go back to the stat block around that area to see if there are any errors. Another example of an error, let's say reach C, there was no space in between them, and I import, there's no melee attack, the punch somehow appeared in ranged and it has a range and it has a note saying reach C. I'll go back to the stat block and you'll have to edit it to fix it. I've done my best to parse as many different formats of stat blocks as I could find. However, occasionally PDF formatting breaks things up incorrectly. And this is where you'll have to fix it. After you paste it in and you import and you find out where the error is, you'll go back to the stat block and try to manually fix it and then import again. Don't forget to check out the user's guide for all the optional parameters that can be added to a melee attack or a ranged attack. These will appear in the various PDF stat blocks. And that's it. In a few minutes, we've created nine NPCs. If you find a stat block that doesn't seem to parse correctly, feel free to open an issue on our GitHub's issue page. I'll do my best to evaluate it and either help you parse it or update the code so that it can parse it automatically. And as always, thank you for watching.